Brighton are a marvel of the modern game. Smart investments and incredible business has catapulted them among the strongest in English football. And today, I take the reins. However, I have to sell my best player every season. Let's see if this strategy can win you a Champions League title. So here is our default starting 11 as we take control of Brighton. And our strongest player this first season is the captain, Lewis Dunk, on the transfer list. And from next season onwards, I'm also going to have to sell our highest goal contributor. I just love to make life difficult for myself. And Ange Postacoglu wants Lewis Dunk 18 million pounds. Greetings, boss. I want to welcome you to Brighton and Hove Albion. Sold. We also get an offer in for him here from Aston Villa. And there it is, lads. Lewis Dunk, no longer a Brighton player. He is off to Ange Postacoglu's Tottenham Revolution. And we immediately go out and get his replacement. It is the English defender, Mark Gahey. Eight years younger than Lewis Dunk. Three overall less joining us here from Crystal Palace. This right here could be an incredibly stupid decision. It's certainly a risky one. We're going to sign Kevin Danso on its own. This is a fantastic signing. We get him from Lens for 28.9 million pounds. But the thing that terrifies me is his 80 overall. And this puts him among our best players this season. We could have any players get some good growth and be the highest rated next year, but we risk signing players that can only stay for one year. And I'm hoping Kevin Danso doesn't fall into this category. Our clean out of the older players at Brighton continues though. Veltman is off to Aston Villa. And we've also sold Adam Webster to Manchester United. We're also gonna be saying goodbye to Danny Welbeck. For me, Evan, well, that's not that's not Danny Welbeck. We've sold a little, we've got a loan here. But what I was trying to say is for me, Evan Ferguson is the future at Brighton. Danny Welbeck's heading to Brentford. I think Real Madrid also think that Evan Ferguson is the future. Absolutely buzzing about this transfer. Harvey Elliott is on the outer and struggling for game time at Liverpool. So we're going to offer him a lifeline. He's coming down south and joining us for just two million pounds over his transfer value. That is, that is a great great picker. Focusing on the future as well, Billy Gilmore off on a season-long loan to West Ham, and the Paraguayan left midfielder and CISO's off to Marseille on loan. So far, so good at Brighton, a solid opening transfer window. Who's going to be on the chopping block next season? Well, I'm excited, but also nervous to find out. Don't forget as well, lads, we are in the Europa League. We've got a bloody tough group, but I'm excited to see how we go in this competition. Hopefully, we can go on a bit of a run. For Brighton standards, We've had a pretty poor start to the season. We're sitting 12. I want us up pushing for European football, some sort of European football every single season. 12th is not where we want to be. We did manage to get second in our Europa League group and we're through to the prelims against Feyenoord. So watch this space. One thing Brighton seem to really do well is their next man up policy. They lose a star player and they have two or three players ready to fulfill his place in the squad. I'm kind of keeping the one man policy or the next man up policy ready for Pascal Gross. He's not getting any younger and he's up there with our highest rated players. So we're going to sign the Polish right midfielder, Nikola Zaluski from Roma on a bargain. His value is just, he's val okay. His value was 14 mil. I've signed him and it's gone up to 20 mil. The Brighton effect. Sorry, I think in that whole rant, I just said Pascal Gross. I meant Sully March. All right, lads. All right, all right. I'm putting this down to foundations. This is first season at its finest. We finished 14th with Brighton. Not the best, but we're thinking about the future. Top of the table as we scroll up is going to be Manchester City one point ahead of Arsenal. Arsenal win the FA Cup in the North London derby. Manchester United win a massive rivalry match against Leeds in the Carabao Cup. Man United, a successful season for them as they win the Champions League. We do not win the Europa League. We got eliminated 6-4 in the prelims. And it is Fenerbahce winning the Conference League. The moment of truth though, lads. Who got the most goal contributions? Oh, it's Matoma. Matoma with 21 goal contributions this season. We're going to have to sell him in season two. We are also going to be saying goodbye to James Milner, who's retiring. Imari Samwells is who I'm just letting go. And Adam Lalana, who is going to Southampton. Not our best start to life at Brighton by any stretch of the imagination, but the foundations are laid. Let's crack on in season two. All right, lads, moment of truth. Who is our highest rated player to start the season? God damn it. I 
knew this was going to happen. We took a risk. We get 14th and we're going to have to put Kevin Danso on the transfer list along with Matoma. Maybe I've bitten off more than I can chew. We know that we're going to have to sell Danso. So I'm going to sign his replacement. I've gone conservative here. Long-term vision. Usman Diamande, the Ivory Coast center half. 77 overall. I think we're going to be safe where we won't have to sell this guy for at least a couple seasons. The first man out of the club is Leonard. He's heading to West Brom on a permanent transfer. Dennis Undav is back from his season-long loan. And we've decided to say goodbye to him on a permanent Permanent base this time off to West Ham. Kasper Kozlowski is off on loan to Brentford for the year. And Martin Batarina is going to be our new addition here to the midfield. Getting some life and young blood into this midfield role. The Croat joins us here from Leeds United. Last year, we had the value go skyrocketed. This year, Batarina's one goes down by about 8 mil. That's annoying. I really want to give Evan Ferguson the starting striker role. Jao Pedro had a great year last year, but we're going to send him off on loan. I'm trying to protect you, Jao. We're sending him to Bilbao for two years. And there it is. It's time to say goodbye to Kevin Danso. We get 47.5 million pounds. That is an 18.6 million pound profit in just one season. That is the most Brighton thing I've ever heard. Another low move here as Enciso's off to Villa. Sarmiento's teaming up with Mitro at Al Halal. And we say goodbye to our top goal contributor from last season, Matoma, who joins Mikel Arteta at Arsenal. We're also going to be saying goodbye to Solly March, who joins Augsburg for £17.5 million. But oh my god. We have 114 million pounds. I was only intending on upgrading like one or two more positions this window. Maybe I can really boost the overall of this squad. Our Matoma replacement is going to come from the club we sold him to. It is Emil Smith Rowe. Just like some of the other signings I've made, he's not getting really enough game time at a bigger club. He's coming to Brighton to rescue his career and enter an incredible system. And I cannot wait to see what Emil Smith Rowe will do in Brighton colors. I am electing to invest money at the right back role as well. Juan Foyth, the Argentine, is going to join us from Villarreal. This could be a bit of a Marta signing because he's 81 overall tied for our highest rated player this season. If we have to sell him and reinvest again next season, I'm okay with that. But I also want to be competitive this year. Personally, I think I need to get around the fact that I might have to use players for just one season and say goodbye and be okay with that. Super curious to see how this team is going in the Premier League, though, halfway through the season. If I have to blow up the operation again, I'm not opposed to that. Personally, I recommend not getting attached to anybody in this video, lads. But if you guys are enjoying this video and you aren't already subscribed, make sure you scorpion kick that subscribe button down below on the final push towards 500,000 subscribers. Help us get there. All right, lads. 1st of January, 13th. I need to approach this a lot differently. I'm going to send Verbruggen out on loan for the remainder of the season. He's our 77 rated young goalkeeper. He's off to Marseille. And we're going to go out here and get ourselves 84 rated Jordan Pickford. I am fully of the mindset that I'm going to have to sell this guy next season. But if we can get ourselves a boost in this season, that is going to make the world of difference. I'm honestly just going to try side, just try to boost up the lowest rated players in this squad so that we can get a good team. That's my only strategy right now. If I sign a whole bunch of decent players, all right, I'm going to have to sell one or two of them next year. But we're still going to have a whole bunch of decent players. Yeah, I'm going to have to change my strategy entirely. This is proving to be one of the hardest videos I have ever made. We finished 15th, top of the table where we wish we were is Liverpool. Man City win the FA Cup. Liverpool win the Carabao Cup. Milan win the Champions League. Monaco, the Europa. And the Conference League goes to Bill Bilbao. Our striker, Jao Pedro, wins a Conference League. And Evan Ferguson is going to be leaving us next season. 21 goal contributions for the Irishman. I'm so glad I spent all that money on Jordan Pickford just to come 15th. And I'm fairly certain it's going to stay this way. Yeah, Jordan Pickford is the highest rated player in the squad. 
I'm okay with that though, because Verbruggen's loan move went well. He's now 80 rated, and I'm definitely bringing Jal Pedro back from his loan. 81 rated, and that helps give him now we have to put Evan Ferguson on the transfer list. My goal for this season though, in this window, is to have the whole squad minimum 80. I've just got to focus on building the overall squad of the team and accept that I'm going to have to sell the best guy every year. And we are not messing about, lads. Gabri Vega has been in the Saudi league at Al Ali for the past few years. Is his value. Oh my god, that makes me look like a genius. We were getting a bargain to begin with, but his value goes up to 61 and a half million pounds as we bring the Spaniard to the Amex. And Crystal Palace are getting themselves an absolutely brilliant pickup here as they get Evan Ferguson, our top goal contributor from last season, for 23.2 million pounds. Our third season and our third centre-back signing, Perstiers is going to bring the overall, the back line up once again to an 82 overall. We are going to be saying goodbye, though, to our former captain, Dahoud, as the German centre midfielder is off to Leeds United. Going to cash in here, though, on Tyler, the creator, as we sell Igor to Chelsea for 18.5 million pounds. Now, we've actually made a massive signing here to the centre midfield role, but in a way that I don't think many of us expected to. As we knew, we had to get rid of Jordan Pickford. We were not getting any suitors in, so I thought he's an 84-rated goalkeeper. We could use him as leverage to make a big signing, and we do just that, signing Andre Almeida for £23 million plus Jordan Pickford from Marseille. Yeah, the board's happy about that one because we get ourselves an 83 rated center midfielder and have one of the best midfields now in the Premier League, Almeida and Gabri Vega. I still want to get some growth for this guy, but I am going to send Diomande on a season long loan to Newcastle. And Batarina is off on a two year loan to Crystal Palace. Man, I am praying that this new balls to the wall approach from us is going to be the difference maker and is going to get us above mid table. This has been a pathetic start to life. We need to be in the top 10 come January. January. Thank you. Finally, finally, we are in a respectable position where we should be. We're sick with Brighton here after our third season, well, halfway through our third season. Four points behind Newcastle, but a whole lot of talent breathing down our necks. Come on, lads. That is more like it. Oh, that is a massive relief off of our shoulders. We finish in the top Four. Liverpool winning the league. This is such a far cry from the seasons we've been having, but the relegation zone is Leicester, Burnley, and Southampton. Our South Coast neighbours, Bournemouth, winning the FA Cup. Arsenal win a North London derby in the Carabao. God, I'm in such a better mood now. Arsenal also win the Champions League. They're having a successful video. Starter and A take down Man City in the Jeremy Doku derby, and Fiorentina win the Conference League. All right, lads, who got top goal contributor? Oh, yeah. I think this is something we have to get used to, but Jal Pedro with 27 goal contributions. My God, man. We're going to have to get rid of him next year, but he's done it in style. I think, honestly, we're going to have to get a new striker every year. Champions League footy back at the Amex next season, however, is a massive relief. Let's get into it. So we know we're going to have to say goodbye to Jal Pedro, but who is the highest rated player? It is a four-way tie. We're going to the wheel, lads. Who's is it going to be Smith Rowe, Vega, Almeida, or Foyth? No! No! This is not the one I wanted. Oh, it's Vega. Oh, that is brutal. I'm not going to lie, lads. I was hoping it was going to be one Foyth, but instead it is Gabri Vega. The wonder kid who was transfer listed. First man out of the club this season is going to be Jensen Weir off to our rivals, Southampton, for two mil. I'm not just trying to make massive transfers at the positions that we have to make big transfers at this year. I'm trying to improve the entire squad. Nico Williams, the Spanish midfielder, joining us here from Villarreal. But there it is, ladies and gentlemen. This breaks my heart. But like I said, I can't get too attached to these players. Just a year after we bring him back from the Saudi League, we sell Gabri Vega to Manchester United for 93.5 million pounds. To be fair, that is an incredible profit. We get over double what we paid for him last year. That is business. And an even bigger bit of business has gone down as we have sold our top goal scorer, Jao Pedro, for a ridiculous 97 million pounds to Arsenal. We have a ridiculous amount of money now to replace our squad with. If 
I'm clever with this, we might be able to build a Champions League winning roster this season. We've got ourselves our new striker, our Jao Pedro replacement. 86 rated Belgian striker, Luis Openda joining us here from RB Leipzig. We're doing the double raid on Leipzig. We've gave, given them a lot of money, but we get two quality players. It's a new starting left back, Fabiano Parizzi joining us here for 52 million pounds. And the fun don't stop there, lads. It's another Italian joining the side. Nicolo Faioli joining us from Atalanta. A brilliant transfer window. This team is now so damn strong. I've kept a little bit of money in the budget and it's between Elliot, Gehi and Verbruggen to see who is going to stay in the club come January because I'm upgrading one of those positions. That is a guarantee. But our first Champions League appearance is a tough one. Barcelona, PSV Eindhoven, and RB Salzburg. This group, I could see any of these four teams getting through. Here's to hoping we're one of them. That is so tight. Barcelona miss out on the round of 16. We get in through the skin of our teeth alongside PSV. We top Group H though, and the season four Champions League dream stays alive. And in the round of 16, we're gonna be facing Roma. Okay, Mourinho. I see you. We are in a battle to get ourselves back to the Champions League, though, for season number five. Currently fifth outside of a Champions League spot. Damn, Elliot on 81. Gay 81. Verbruggen 81. None of them grew in the first half of the season. I have decent merit to try selling all three of them. So after some careful consideration, I have decided to improve the center back position. We go for an 84 overall Spaniard in Daniel Vivian from Villarreal. A massive challenge for us now, ladies and gentlemen. The Champions League knockout rounds first leg away in Rome as we take on AS Roma, which we get destroyed. Three nil in. McAllister, our former player, puts the icing on the cake. It's gonna take a miracle. It is gonna take a miracle for us to stay alive in this Champions League. My God. Here I was at the start of the season like a dickhead saying, oh, I think if we buy the right players, we can win a Champions League. Nah, you're about to get absolutely thumped, Jared. We lose 6-2 on aggregate. We were not even close to a Champions League this year. We just need to pray on our lucky stars. We get back there for season five. Four points off the Premier League title, but we sneak into a Champions League spot again for season number five. That is an incredibly close Champions League run. Man City winning the league and the relic. Man United 11. Palace, Borough and West Brom going down. Liverpool win the FA Cup and the Carabao goes to Manchester United. We haven't even been close to a cup win. Real Madrid end up winning the Champions League. Monaco take down Union St. Galois to win the Europa League and the Conference League goes to Feyenoord over Chelsea. I'm nervous, lads. I'm nervous. Who is it going to be? We're going to be getting a new striker again next year. We're going to get a new striker. Openda, 33 goal contributions, 23 there from Smith Rowe, 17 from Williams. No growth from Williams is disappointing. And we are going to be saying goodbye to Jamie Mullins. Huge loss for the squad. I'm letting him walk. All right, lads. We're here at the start of season five. Who is our highest rated player? It is a four-way tie again, but we already know we have to sell Openda. So it is going to be between Almeida, Faoli, and Smith Rowe. Back to the wheel we go. There is no winning with this one. We're either losing a winger or a crucial center midfielder. And it is going to be either Smith Rowe or Faoli. It is Emil Smith Rowe. But whilst we wait for the offers to roll in, we still have improvements to do to our squad. Harvey Elliott's growth has been downright disappointing. So we're going to bring the Ukrainian attacking midfielder. Harai Sudakov across here from Lille, 52.3 million pounds, 85 rated. I've never heard of this guy before today. He looks like a gem on EAFC. You guys aren't going to believe where I've just sold a Neil Smith row to. Nottingham Forest. Nottingham Forest have just dropped 100 million pounds on a Mill Smith row. I think they're doing their own type of rebuild. And there it is, lads. Lock it in. Our top scorer from last year, 
gone and off to Old Trafford. Openda joining Man United for 98 million pounds. I had to bring him back though, lads. He was here on loan in season one, just like he is in real life. But Ansu Fati will be joining us at Brighton on a permanent deal. We welcome him back with open arms from AS Monaco for 83 million pounds. And we break our club record transfer fee here for the striker replacement. It is Alive Wahi, 24 years old, 88 overall. The Frenchman joining us from Atletico Madrid. I'm fairly confident he's over only gonna be here for this season, but I've got my fingers, toes, and everything crossed. That's all we're gonna need. Brentford are known for their money ball tactics, but I was genuinely so shocked to see this man on their squad. Mamad Shavili, the Georgian goalkeeper, 86 rated, joining us here as our new starting shot stopper. We've come a long way from the pretty dire straits we found ourselves in a couple seasons ago. This team is sick. And I like this process because we have been able to discover some quality players that I'm hoping can help lead us to Champions League glory this year with Brighton. Let's go check out our group though for the second time. I thought our group last year was tough. We cannot catch a break. Juve, Monaco, and Rangers. I'm so glad we signed Ansu Fati from Monaco. This T, this group is wild, man. Oh my God. Here goes nothing. Once again, we escape. We're not top of the group, but we're headed back to the round of 16 for the second time in this Brighton rebuild. Who are we facing? We've got Napoli. Okay, Napoli in the round of 16. I mean, we got absolutely marinated by an Italian club in Roma last year. Let's hope we can get over that hurdle. We are on 33 points here though in the Premier League. Again, this title race and this top four race is ridiculously tight. I'm taking a deep breath because if we lose again in the round of 16 and get done three nil in the first leg, I am going to lose my head. Quick sim, the first leg and it's a two nil win. Wahi and Faioli getting us the lead. I'm still not confident though for our trip to Naples. Up 2-0 as we travel to Naples. Estupanan is in as Parisi is suspended. Here we go, if we bottle this. Oh my God, we almost bottled it, but we are through to the quarterfinals and I might be the most relieved man in Cincinnati, Ohio. We've got Lens. Lens are on their own. Like I would compare Brighton and Lens to a similar level at the moment in world football. Both clubs not expected to be doing what they are, but they're punching above their weight. Lens in the Champions League in real life and they're in the quarterfinals as our opponent in this rebuild full strength starting 11 all players back Parisi's back in the starting 11 as we are at home here in Brighton for the first leg against Lenz and Surikov our Ukrainian attacking midfielder gives us a lead to take back to France oh here we go lads all right second leg Away in France for a spot in a Champions League semi-final with Brighton and Hove Albion. And we do it. Batterina off the bench to kill us it. Parisi, Batterina, and Williams. We're through to the final four, baby. It is the Ansu Fati Derby here. Barcelona in the Champions League semi-finals with an opportunity to face either Inter Milan or Leverkusen in a Champions League final. We need to get them first up. We are at home once again for the first leg. It has been a good luck chance for us so far today. Let's hope that continues and let's hope we can take a strong first leg result back to the Camp Nou as we take on Barca. It is going to be a two-all draw. They've got Marcus Rashford and the coach, Xavi, he subbed himself on. This is the big time, ladies and gentlemen. This is what you dream about. Everything in the balance as you travel to the Camp Nou, a Champions League final spot on the line. Can we take Brighton to the eclipse? We do in extra time. Oh my God, we come from behind and it is Sudikov who is gonna score the goal. Our Ukrainian attacking midfielder is gonna send us to a Champions League final against either Inter Milan or Bayer Leverkusen. That is insane. And our opponent, for the Champions League final here in season number five is Inter Milan. Taking a look around the grounds, Atletico Madrid win the Europa League. Meanwhile, Munchen and Gladbach win the Conference League on pens. We finish third in the Premier League, meaning we are back in the Champions League for season six, regardless of tonight's result. Down the bottom of the table though is Coventry, Everton and Brentford. Arsenal take down West Brom in the FA Cup final and Arsenal win the Carabao Cup. But the man who will not be joining us in season 
Number six is going to be Eli Wahi. Regardless of the result, this is going to be his final game in bright and colors. Let's make sure it's everybody's final game as well. Here we go, my friends. The promised land, the Champions League final. This is going to be a matchup for the ages. Also, I need to apologize, lads. We're going to be playing in our alternate kits. The blue and white stripes just clashed way too much with both of Inter's kits. Harry Kane plays for Inter. Harry Kane's gone for goal there. Look at down the line. Good stuff there to Foyth. I'm going to try going back. Beautiful stuff. Williams, I'm pushing for the gap. Back to fourth. Come on, we need something here, lads. We've been terrible in this one so far. Nope. Williams at the near post. Terrible finish. Need a good cross into the area here, lads. It's our left back, Parisi. That's a decent cross. We can't win the ball, but it's back out to Parisi. He's going to put it out here to fourth. Fourth to Scherz. Why are the defenders having all the shots? Although I might have to have more shots with Scherz. Ansu Fati feed it there. Good stuff. Good run down the wing here from Parisi. Parisi needs some support. That is not where we wanted to go, but we're going to have the shot anyways. And we put it wide. Stuff Williams. That's brilliant. Feed it here. Flick it. Go. Why? Why? He's going to give us the lead here. That is a beautiful bit of attacking football. And the Frenchman in his final game is going to give us the lead in the Champions League finals. Beautifully tapped on there from Fati. Come on, lads. We've got the momentum. Parisi's got some space. Put that one in there. Get the header onto it. Williams, that's a great run for a poor finish. Marino. Marino's trying to get past Scherz. He holds it up. Block it. What a tackle, Vivian. What a stop. Nah, don't let him get another chance. Luis Diaz blocked. Just clear it. Come on. Yes. Take it to the corner. Secure the result. Let's get one right at the death. Almeida blocked. Blow the whistle, referee. Come on, ref. Come on, lads. We do it. We've won a Champions League here with Brighton. Oh my God, that was so stressful. That was an absolute roller coaster, but I loved this challenge. If you guys have any challenges like this, I would love to hear them in the comment section down below. But it is going to be our captain, the Dutchman, Hershers, who is going to lift the Champions League trophy here for Brighton and Hove Albion. Lads, if you enjoyed this rebuild, make sure you click here to subscribe and click here to watch another video.